And I would like Johan Arnason to continue this debate. He's an erudite, cosmopolitan, historical sociologist. Um, the general themes we are given are actually age, global history, and modernity, and there's not much you can say about all that in five minutes, but I'd like to make <laughs> one suggestion, namely that it's useful to think of all three as frontier areas of civilizational analysis, uh, that is short for the comparative analysis of historical civilizations, frontier areas where it faces challenges and finds opportunities, where it also has to deal with problems and dilemmas, um, Axiality, globality, and modernity are problematics of this kind. And I'll start with axiality, and I may not get far beyond it. Uh, as Björn Wittrock noted, the idea of the axial age, yeah. referring to this great intellectual and religious mutation in several relatively separate places around the middle of the last millennium uh, before our era, it's an old one. Um, and the attractivity of this idea, once you start scrutinizing the record, you find it in some unlikely places. The attractivity has been that you seemed to have here, among the great transformations of humanity, the one that is most resolutely spiritual. Uh, that's not quite how we see it today. I think Eisenstadt's achievement has been to translate this idea into the language of historical sociology. And I think it's fair to say the translation is still in progress. One thing we need to get into it is more about the interplay of culture and power. But still, uh, it is a fact that civilizational analysis, at, as it has developed over the last 25 years or so, has taken off from this problematic uh, more than from any other. I said there are still challenges. I mean, I don't think we have quite finished with an alternative reading of the axial age, the one summed up by Eric Fugelin when he said about uh, Greek and Jewish axiality that it shows us history as an exodus from civilizations, exodus into a higher insight, ultimately into revealed religion. Um, uh, by contrast, of course, the discussion about the axial age has tended to stress diverse paths. And contrary to what was suggested before, I do not think you can grasp the uh, overall logic of the axial age as an overcoming of polytheism. There's something to be said for the idea that Greek polytheism was an integral part of Greek axiality. You also have incorporations of kinds of polytheism in the uh, Chinese and Indian versions of axiality. Uh, but I also suggest that there may be dilemmas, and the dilemma I see in the interpretation of, axial, of the axial age is the following. You either stay with the comparative analysis um, of those different constellations, Greek, uh, Jewish, Indian, Chinese, possibly Iranian, uh, and uh, the list may not be closed yet. You either stay with that and elaborate a more detailed model of contrasts and affinities. And then I think it's rather likely <coughs> you will end up with um, acknowledging that the axial age is a bit like the famous ladder that you throw away after you have climbed up. I mean, uh, it served as a launching pad for civilizational analysis. On this view, uh, it might have to be left behind. Or the other option, you go for the uh, typological rather than the chronological reading of the axial age. You think of axiality as a fairly definite pattern that can be reproduced in different situations and places yeah. that can happen at different moments in history, and then you get multiple axial ages. But a pattern uh, shifts towards uniformity, and then I think you might be drawing back to something like Fögelin's exodus from civilizations. I mean, it is uh, becoming very cross-civilizational. Shall I stop there, or can I have one? One or two words, please. OK, one, one or two minutes. Uh, I wanted to go on to global history, uh, because there is a certain <coughs> analogy here. Um, there are those who argue that global history, both in the sense of the real thing uh, and in the sense of writing about it, is antithetical to civilizational analysis. I think you see a gradual conversion to this point of view in the work of William McNeill. I mean, he started with an attempt to write a history of a plurality of civilizations of a more rational kind than uh, Spengler and Toynbee had done. He ended up stressing the creation of global spaces and interconnections that become more in important in themselves than the civilizations that enter into them. So, 
not so much an exodus here as a kind of history as a long march beyond civilizations. Um, and we are still in the process, I think, of elaborating a civilizationist uh, response to that. But um, I think I should stop here and not go into further details. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.